From having a long history of making gross and disgusting jokes, to being accused of nepotism for hiring his wife in multiple DC projects, here's the shady truth about James Gunn. For starters, James has a long history of making gross and disgusting jokes. Now, some people may feel like his statements were meant to be jokes, but after you see how gross some of these are, it may change your mind about them. Because even though a lot of his comedy revolves around black humor, Gunn has never shied away from really sensitive topics, like sexual violence. In fact, he's joked about them, as if they're not a big deal at all. Very early on in his career, he made a name for himself, as being the guy who makes edgy jokes like this in an attempt to simply shock people and gain their attention. But the sheer amount of tweets that you can look up from this time period goes to show that this wasn't a one-time thing. It was a style of comedy that was consistent with his personality. Okay. You know, it's weird because my girlfriend always makes me put on a cut out of John Cena before we make love. <laughs> so it's a strange coincidence that you and I have in common. Have he made his entire gimmick around joking about these terrible things and trying to make them appear as if they're not important or serious issues. Stuff like this may be all right for a 14 year old who's got no concept of how serious these situations are. But from a grown man like James, who was already a big name in Hollywood when he was making these jokes, it ends up feeling even more unacceptable. I mean, it's because of all this that Disney even fired James Gunn. This was back when his troublesome tweets first surfaced on the internet. Now, to understand how big of an event this was, you have to consider the wild success of the Guardians of the Galaxy series. The first film was a massive hit that almost no one saw coming, and this was followed by the sequel that was loved by fans just as much, if not more. So, obviously Disney would have wanted to continue that trend, but James's past tweets were just that bad that Disney decided to take the risk and work on the third film without the filmmaker being involved. It seems that the company simply drew a line and decided they could no longer work with him. And to give you an idea of how terrible James's tweets were, in one of them he mentioned that he likes it when little boys touch him in his silly place. Now, I don't know about you, but no part of that even feels remotely funny to me. It's a bit gross and feels kind of sick for a grown man to be making these statements. What made it worse was that this same theme was seen across a number of his old tweets. At the time, Disney mentioned that the offensive attitudes and statements found on his Twitter were inconsistent with their own values, and because of this, they ended all business relationships with him. Though, James was eventually brought back to direct the film after fan outcry and support from his co-stars. Gunn also issued an apology for the offensive tweets that he made. In his apology, he mentioned that a lot of people who followed his career know where he started from, and that he was known for making jokes that were a bit ridiculous and taboo. He stated that over the years he has tried to work on himself as a person, while also developing himself professionally. This includes his sense of humor and what he deemed funny. Gunn also added that he's made no attempt at hiding this, and instead has been very public about wanting to change this. James said that he's sorry to any people he's hurt with his words, and that he means it. And while those are nice and flowery words, some fans felt like they were still not enough. Especially when you consider that his jokes were on topics like AIDS, 9-11, and the Holocaust. A lot of people also thought that he was in some way trying to justify his actions by not only saying that they were a thing of the past, as if that made it okay, but also by saying that it was his style of humor, which was taboo. It's pretty obvious how comfortable he was with using these statements, that it went beyond simply making jokes. It's possible he spoke in such an easy manner when discussing these topics in general conversations too, which is totally not the right way to go about when talking about these sensitive things. But that's not the only controversy that makes him look shady. There's also the fact that fans think he got Henry Cavill fired. So for this, you'll need to go back to Black Adam's release. While the film itself was mediocre at best, what made fans really excited for it and the future of the DCEU was that it featured Henry in a post credit scene. This nervous. Black Adam. Now, people had been waiting for years to finally see the star return to his iconic role. So when it happened, you just know a lot of them were ecstatic about it. Plus, Dwayne Johnson came in with a plan and said that he's got the next few DCU films lined up, with the major conflict revolving around Superman and Black Adam. The two were supposed to have a climactic battle by the end of the first round of films. Fans were happy to see the DCEU go in this direction. Behind you! Did he just catch a rocket? He got a rocket. Because it finally meant that Henry would have the chance to do justice to his iconic role.
But of course, James had to come in and ruin the fun for everyone. After he took over as the new head of DC, he decided to wipe everything away and start from a blank slate. Yup, this meant removing Henry from the role of Superman and pretty much destroying the entire plan that Dwayne Johnson had come up with. To make matters worse, Gunn blamed Dwayne, saying that he didn't fire Henry. It's just that the director never hired him in the first place. Loads of fans accused James of outright hating Henry because of this. And while, like always, he rushed to Twitter to defend himself. Fans haven't heard Cavill's say in all this, which makes them wonder if they are actually good friends as Gunn has claimed. Things between the two also seem pretty rough, because James didn't even consider the star for his new Superman movie. Apparently Gunn wants to do a completely fresh storyline starring a younger Superman. And while that's an alright idea, the fact that it comes at the expense of Cavill's iconic role kind of feels like a slap in the face. And the fans seem to agree, since James got a ton of hate when he first announced his new plans for the DC Universe, and how it wouldn't involve any of the original actors. A lot of people also think that he's a bit in over his head, and that he can't run an entire franchise. I mean, sure, he may have done a good job with Guardians of the Galaxy, but making one decent franchise which only consists of three films is a whole other deal than starting an entire universe from scratch. And if James is hell-bent on doing things his own way, to the point where he'd fire fan-favorite Henry Cavill simply to do a storyline he likes, I don't think he's going to be giving up control to someone else anytime soon. Speaking of which, there's another thing he did that fans found to be really shady. Turns out Gunn was recently accused of nepotism when his wife Jennifer Holland constantly kept appearing in almost every new DCEU project. After being involved in The Suicide Squad, she also had a major role in Peacemaker. Holland went on to have cameos in other DCEU films after this, and turns out, she made her way onto the MCU as well, since she had a minor role in the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie too. <laughs> Billy Batson. Yeah? I mean, no. It happened enough times that fans started noticing a pattern, and rightfully called him out on it. But instead of taking responsibility, James deflected and said that the only project he's cast his wife in was in The Suicide Squad. He mentioned that he's got nothing to do with the casting of any other movie. But here's the thing, while James directly may not be involved, I doubt any casting director wants to turn down the wife of the new head of DC Films. That feels like shooting yourself in the foot. So James basically failed to take into account the impact that his position has on the casting processes of DC Films. Plus, it seems that Jennifer might continue to be a huge part of the DCU, since Peacemaker is going to be incorporated into the new universe. Certainly feels like nepotism to me. So from being accused of nepotism for hiring his wife in multiple DC projects, to having a long history of making gross and disgusting jokes, that was the shady truth about James Gunn.